Hey, what is up you guys? You're watching Team APS. I'm Paul. And I'm Alec. And today, we are going to be counting down the top 10, 10. Yu-Gi-Oh! anime decks. And we spent an immense amount of time going through the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh! with statistics and numbers. Okay, no, we didn't do that. We picked the decks that you guys talk about the most, your favorite anime decks. So, before we get into that, we've got a quick announcement. You guys like watching our videos because you love Yu-Gi-Oh! Right. And we like to make videos about Yu-Gi-Oh for you guys. Yeah, we make videos about the card game, but as it happens, we're also really big fans of the anime. Huge weebs. Like, we love it. So we were pretty excited when we heard about Amino's new stories feature. Now we've teamed up with Amino to make our own stories about the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. So for those of you guys who don't know what Amino is, it is an interest-driven mobile app full of different communities for all of the things you like. For us, of course, it's anime, but you it know. It can be what? Cosplay, video games. Comics, books. Like, even like specific di for different anime. So if you guys are interested in Amino, you can click the link in the description to download the app. It's available on iOS and Android. Everybody. And if you search for Team APS, you can find us and follow us. And don't forget to go ahead and hit the bell icon so you get notified from whenever we post new videos. This is a really great way to support us here and on Amino. So we hope you guys check it out. And now let's get to the decks, starting with number 10, Harpies. Yeah, so Harpy Ladies, used by my Valentine in the anime. The most aggressively censored archetype we've ever seen. Yeah, that's actually probably the, the first censored one too, I think. Yeah. Honestly, was, was that the first archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh? Close. Maybe like Gravekeepers, I'm not sure which. Like, it was pretty early. Played by my Valentine, she played against... Joey, Yugi, everyone. Joey, you yeah, she played against everybody. So Mai's Harpy Ladies were... The earliest kind of idea of monsters that works together, the more of them that were on the field, the stronger they got. She, she had summon cards more like with elegant egotist. And Harpy's pet dragon, hunting ground, probably the most infamous Oof. of them. Harpies are a very popular deck. I'm not actually sure why. I wouldn't say it's like one of my personal favorites, but I do like the playstyle. I mean, it's kind of hard not to like Harpies when, like I said before, it's one of the earliest archetypes. And it's back impressive. when Yu-Gi-Oh was just a bunch of random monsters thrown into 40 card decks. You could make a deck centered around a, a theme, a strategy. It's a little more cohesive and it's so it's all aggressive. Like right? hunting ground Blowing can like pop, back pop, 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 pop. There's no once per turn. Um, and, and then once they got like Harpy Lady 1 and the others, they can get big and... And know? then when they started getting more support, that's when they got things like Harpy Channeler and you know, Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon. They can Harpist. use Lightning Chidori. Oh yeah, Harpist. It's like the X Saber Dark Soul for them. And then recently they just got Harpy Conductor actually in like the last Battles of Legends set. She's a Link too, right? Yeah, and it helps. It can like, whenever you bounce your Harpies, you can bounce your opponent's cards. Ugh. You can blow up your spells and traps, which gets you effects. She's like a walking Miss Valley. I think that's Hysteric Sign, Alluring Moon, or Alluring Moon Spirit. Mirror okay, that's Spirit. That's the spell, right? The continual spell? There's a continual spell and there's a trap. Okay. And they both get effects when they're blown up. So yeah, Harpies are very fun. They're really easy to get into. I actually highly recommend them for beginners as well. But yeah, so deck number nine is the Code Talkers. So these are actually uh, new. They're all about programming and computers and things that I don't Yeah, understand. this is Yusaku's deck from Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains, or Playmaker, sorry. Playmaker. Um, so the Code Talker monsters are pretty cool. They're different Cybers monsters. They have various attributes. And the way, like, the way that they work is, they kind of work with the Cynet cards. Cynet mining. So Cynet. they're Salamangrids. There's, sure. And okay. they're getting, they're going to be getting some new cards soon, though. I think that's the most exciting part about this, because at first I ignored these things. Encode, Xcode. I mean, we played Decode. Power Code. We all code. played Decode. But they're about to get some cards that actually help you summon more of them out. I think they come out in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist, uh, the game that's coming out. You get like... Oh, that's true. Yeah, we like sign it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's some cool cards coming out for that. They can actually extra link your opponent. Oof. If you're into, if you like I that mechanic, thought we escaped it. I thought we were free. Yeah, you know they can they can do a pretty good job of that. Um, and you know, I'm gonna try to build it and see where it goes. That's I know a lot of people talk about it. They really like the theme. I'm not a huge fan of the Cynet like thematics so but much. Cyber's but cards they tend to be pretty gen like they're rather generic, generic. And advantageous. So. so it'll go somewhere. But on to number eight. It is photons. Used by Kite Tinjo. Look, man, they make rank eights. What you want? Like, yeah, photons are. 
what they do. Light monsters, they summon and summon and summon. They all have 2,000 attack, or most of them at least. And that's kind of the, the theme. They've got a lot of Xyz monsters. Like if you're into, into big Xyz monsters with big effects that rank up and up and up and up, then uh, this is definitely the deck for you. It's gotten support a lot over oh, the years. And they're getting more. Like with Harpies, actually, they got support in the Legendary Duelist set of last year. And we just got a, we just and we got announcements that we're, we should, we can expect something new coming up. So uh, th this deck is pretty fun because it kind of reminds me of Blue Eyes, but they do have some monsters that can actually negate things, like Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord and stuff. Oh, I hated that card. Why did I play against that? You played it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I it played was. in a theme duel actually against Blue Eyes against Larry. If you guys want to check the video out, you definitely should. It's really fun. It's a deck that I do like, so. I'm gonna give it a, I mean, you should try it out. It's really easy to play. On to number seven. Fright Furs. Man. What was the name of the guy who used this? Oh, Sora? Oh, so, yeah, that's, I, I thought it was gonna take longer to remember his name. He's got a Japanese name that everybody uses though. Oh, that's right. His name was? I don't remember. Actually, I don't either. It's been too long. Either way, Fright Furs and Fluffles are probably like the second most censored archetype. Behind Arby's. Yeah, they all have what they have like blades, like scissors and saws and all kind of nonsense. They're cute stuffed animals that, when fusion summoned into their like I guess fright fur forms, it turns out their stuffing was actually sharp blades of death. That's disturbing when you really think about it. This deck was actually the center of the whole like um, give us fright fur patchwork meme for like several <sighs> years. Patchwork, it got here a little too late. But it is here now. They like, fusion so summon like. a lot. They can OTK opponents. They've had some struggles since the advent of Master Rule 4. Master Rule 4 has made things more difficult, but... Surprised they haven't given them a Link Monster yet. Maybe they will. Give it time. Moving on to deck number six. DDDs. You've played this a lot. A lot's a bit of a stretch. I played oh, them in you their heyday. In I did play them in their heyday when the combos were free and Crystal Wing was your best friend. I remember Siegfried like, uh, and like um, a few of those things. Oh, so much fun. What are DDDs? I really don't know. That's a very difficult question to answer, but I'll try. Okay. So DDDs are mythical creatures, at least DDDs are, mm -hmm. and the DDDs are like conquerors and rulers from history. They all look like demon things. I remember they have, they all have crazy names, like DDD, Flame, King, yeah. High, Caesar, Genghis. That was way too many, but you got the right idea. Yeah. Was like High, Flame, King, Genghis. The way they play is they, essentially they just combo. The A resource lot. that they use though is your life points. And managing the burning oh, life points. Yeah, they have those to, continuous spells that like yep. burn them. They have the covenants or contracts, and you play those. They're very advantageous spells and traps, but they cost like a thousand life points or, or or more or less. It depends. And they've got some pendulum monsters. It's a it's a pendulum some fusions, deck. It's some Xyz. They've got everything. Some synchros. The deck's honestly it's it's a lot of fun. It took forever to get the uh, flame king, but we do have him now. So. Is the light monster out? Is the link? Yes. Yeah. The okay, link monster yeah. is out. They they're notorious for stretching this deck's support out over like years and sets, that's, and so I, think I never know. That's because the uh, Arc Five manga is still is still a thing. So. Oh okay. Well, anywho, the next deck is Synchrons, used by Yusei Fudo. What number are we at? Uh, this is five. I think. Five. Yeah. So Yusei and his Synchrons, and I guess we'll just kind of combine it with like Junk and Stardust because it's all it's really all one him. big it's his thing. Thing. Um. So the different Synchrons each have like a warrior that corresponds with them. Speed Warrior! So like, you know, there's like Turbo Synchron, Turbo Warrior. Nitro Synchron, Nitro Warrior. Junk Synchron, Junk Warrior. Drill Synchron. Floor Synchron. Jet Synchron, actually. Jet Synchron, One of the really better good. ones. Wait, is there a Jet? Well, there's a Jet Warrior. There's a Jet Warrior. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, these are actually some of people's favorite cards. I remember back in the day, around like the Plant Synchro era of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Some of these monsters were all, like a lot of these monsters were actually like viable. That's true, what, Junk Synchron and, um... Junk Synchron, um, Is Debris Dragon in this somewhere? I feel I like mean, it I mean, if we're considering be. it, you say. Like, because it's supposed to be like a, a mini Stardust, right? Oh, no, it's just a mini Dragon. I think there's Synchron Explorer, which actually got back Synchron Monsters from the Grave. When Wait, it was oh, I'm thinking of Unknown Synchron. That was another one. There were a lot of just useful Synchrons. There Road like Synchron and age. Road Warrior. Oh, yeah. Man, there's a lot. There really, there's a lot. If you want an archetype that just has, well, a lot... Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Code Talkers. Like, kind of just 
because all of the different like warriors were like different attributes and kind of just had their own like thing and it reminds me of like true, did a different power thing. code and x code and i guess the one downside to synchrons is uh master of four well <laughs> that's the <laughs> sorry downside. oops but they don't really work that well they don't really work that well together they each just do a thing yeah as a, as a co collective deck they're not great. but there's a lot of options to build with with them plus junk plus synchron i mean uh stardust truth <laughs> so uh next deck is one that you know all about which one? I forgot the list. It's Odd Eyes. Odd Eyes Dragon. That should be my deck, huh? So, um, Odd Eyes, they're used by Yuya. Yuya. So, how do Odd Eyes play? They're a Pendulum deck. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They tend to be like a rank 7 kind of strategy. And you essentially just beat your opponent down using th using the field spell Sky Iris, and you can combine it with Performer Pals. What's that whatever. new one? Like the Odd Eyes, um, the one that like every time one of your Odd Eyes monsters gets destroyed, it gets another one out. Oh, um, it's like a normal monster, but yeah, it's yeah, the, the big guy. Oh God, I forget his name. He's really good. Yeah, there's like, the he uh, makes vanilla. Like, he's great. He gets Vortex Dragon. Vortex Dragon's easily the best one. Vortex right? Dragon, even out of all Odd Eyes cards, that one has actually made it to competitive play. The others kind of Absolute kind of Dragon short. gets him out. Absolute Dragon has That's, to be the one. You but, know. you know, but Vortex is the reason. He's the goal. He's he's everything. Yeah, and Odd Eyes have so many different things. There's Odd Eyes Fusion, the actual spell. Yep, there's plenty of Odd Eyes Fusion monsters. There's also an Odd Eyes Ritual people forget about, but that's Odd Eyes Gravity or whatever his name is. You know, believe it or not, if, if you want to kind of go a bit further with Yuya's deck, it does work kind of well with the Performer Pals and Magicians. Performer Pals, Magicians, you can really Skull do Crowbat Joker can search like all three of those things. It's banned, right? For now, I mean, it, it, it <laughs> finds its way on and off the ban list, so maybe it'll come back one day, right? Pendulums will rise again. See, the third deck Trick. is Cyber Dragon. So this is one that I can talk a lot about because I've been playing it. They um, just got in Duel Links. I don't know why I mentioned that. I just remember Oh that. yeah, I saw that announcement actually. Um, so Cyber Dragon is used by Zane Truesdale, of course, yeah. in the anime. Very popular character from yu Very GX. edgy. Very edgy. He was like edgy or Kaiba, but also not at school. He started off as being like a good student with a little bit of edge. Then he like dropped out of school and got a black jacket and he was like, okay, now I'm really edgy. So Cyber Dragon, if you don't know your Yu-Gi-Oh history, was kind of the start of what people call power creep. You know, not, <laughs> not a... It was a special summon and had Level 2100 five, attack, all that stuff. Special summon, doesn't start a chain. But the actual archetype is all about fusion summoning the really big Chimera Tech monsters that can usually get multiple attacks. Since then, Cyber Dragons have gotten a lot of support. Cyber Dragon Core, Cyber Dragon Hertz, Cyber Dragon Seeger, lots of just many different ones. Their strongest asset competitively right now, I would say, is actually Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon, ah. which you can use by any like any of your Cyber Dragons can contact Fuse with a card in your opponent's extra monster zone or your own too. Remember, he he knows he said any of your Cyber Dragons. That's the most annoying part about it, even oh, the yeah. small ones, because they all can like be considered Cyber Dragon on the field. Yep. So Cyber Dragon, it's a cool machine deck, and if you want to get a little crazy, you can combine them with like Power Bond and Limit Run removal. Cyber Elton and. Yeah, that, that type of stuff. I actually used it against Simo in the Yu Gi Tuber Grand Championship against oh. his hero deck, and I won. Spoiler alert. So, uh, yeah, it was it's a fun deck. I de definitely recommend it. It some of the cards can be pricey, but like you know, could be worse. Yeah, if you're a fan, that's nothing really. All right, deck numero dos. Deck number two is Black Wings. Oh, you knew this had to be here. I mean, everyone loves this deck, right? That sure is not. There's not a whole lot to say. You, they were used by Crow Hogan in Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds and used by Crow Hogan in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc <laughs> Five. I like how we had to have Seth Crow Hogan twice. Like his, I, I kind of like the name. Was. I like that. I just, I just like saying his name. That's Chris's favorite character. He loves Crow. Oh. So Crow uses Black Wings. There are so many of these things. <laughs> there are so many Black. That is a large archetype. Yu-Gi-Oh's got. Who's the best Black Wing right now? I guess, is it um, still Steam? Is Steam the cloak of the Steam best will Black Wing? Most likely to get banned if we're. Well, the, the, if that's the case, Gofu's already banned. Yeah, Gofu's gone. Steam's already. gonna be next. Okay, but if we're actually talking about the Black Wings themselves, they basically just summon each other out, you know. Yep. That's kind of the thing. They've and got, they synchro. Yeah, they got synchros. Black Wing full Armor Master is. Oh, I hate Armor Master. The, armor Master in its heyday was annoying. He full ruined my master. childhood. He's, yeah, he like put the wedge counters on your monsters and he like destroyed destroy them. And, uh, now there's Full Armor Master who does kind of the same thing, except he's also unaffected by like everything. Finally, a decent monster. That's crazy. Black Wings are fun. They've been a staple of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time, and even though they aren't so much anymore, 
they get support every year. So like, I mean, you'll be hard pressed to find a group of people who don't know a black wing player. Cause they don't give that's up. True. Black wing players <laughs> that's do not true. give up. You join if you join their ranks, you're a black wing player for life. There's nothing you can do about it. It really speaks to the popularity of five Ds as well. Like, true, great show. But there's one archetype that we Above all all others we all know and love. Numero uno, and that is heroes. Oh, I, I thought it was blue eyes. I don't know why. But... Blue eyes doesn't count. <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely heroes. Heroes from Yu Gi Oh. GX, I almost said five Ds. Yeah, Jaden's um, signature archetype. Oh, Although it's almost really, like a mega archetype. It's really a yeah. It's like a, an overarching. There's Ooh, let's list them all. So heroes. Yeah, just elemental, elemental heroes. Elemental heroes. Max heroes. Destiny heroes. Destiny heroes. Uh, Vision heroes. Um, evil heroes. Evil heroes. Is that it? Is I that feel all like I'm probably forgetting. I feel like we're something. missing one. There's probably something. Weird. They'll but know. That's all. Those are all we can come up with. The hero archetypes in general all kind of have varying playstyles, but basically they fuse. They, that's really what they they mainly. That was the GX. They fuse. That was the thing in GX, wasn't it? Everyone yeah. kind of fused. Yeah, somewhere. almost everybody. Cyber in GX dragons fused. and roids. And... But the crazy thing about um about heroes is that they still try to work together. That's <laughs> believe it or not, like most hero support, like all the different fusion spells, like solid soldier and vision here, like all of it, it can just mix so well. A lot of that's times, the, charm. the cards would just say a hero monster. Mm -hmm. They don't care which one you you're running. That's what makes cards like Stratos so good because he, yeah, he, he doesn't care who back. he searches. He is Stratos is strong, and he, he got reprinted too. in Battles of Legend. Heroes Revenge. Maybe that was like actually what it all meant. That's what it's uh, all about. Either way, heroes are, it's fun, it's flexible, it's probably Nostalgic. the like, you know, quintessential beginner deck. It's the fusion deck. And I think far and away the most popular anime deck. Oh yeah, you can have, you, you can know like four different hero players and they'll all have four different hero style decks. They'll yeah. all run Stratos, but they'll be different. As long as you're running, running like Dark Law, I'm, I'll still be your friend. I support Dark Law 100%. Trail knows what I'm talking about. So those are the top 10 most popular Yu-Gi-Oh! anime decks, at least in our opinion. But I mean, I, I feel like heroes definitely have to take the cake. Man, the comment section is gonna be full of people telling us their top 10s and why our top 10s aren't good enough. Yeah, and that's okay. Let us know down do in the comments. Know. What are your favorite anime-based decks? There are mm -hmm. plenty that we didn't make on this list. And uh, yeah, so leave it down there. And please give us a like if you like the video. Subscribe, of course, for more Yu-Gi-Oh! And hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date on all Team APS content. Remember to check out Amino Apps and our new stories on there. Links in the description. Alright, that's gonna be it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Past turn.